just wanted to talk about goals and people's perception of them. I don't know uh, if you're the type of person that by the age of eight, you knew you wanted to uh, be a teacher or a doctor or a nurse or whatever the case might be. And by the time you got to college, you still had that same exact goal. Uh, that's never been me. Uh, growing up, I wanted to be a vet. I wanted to be a chef. I wanted to be a professional babysitter. Um, I, I had all these different um, interests. And that's, it's never changed. I still have a ton of different interests. And I think that that bothers people. And they can't understand that perspective so you know you get termed unstable um indecisive um you know you're you're wishy-washy or you know all these all these negative personas of you wanting to um experience different things in life I don't feel like people have to just do one thing I feel like people can do multiple things I don't know where I read it or if I saw it somewhere or if I heard it said um, but many successful people many many successful people have multiple sources of income they don't just do one thing I mean one of one of my people that I was most inspired by um, for years uh, was Maya Angelou. If you look at the list of different things that she pursued, different types of professions that she experienced with, um, just to test those waters, you know, she did a lot of firsts. And I'm not saying I'm trying to do a lot of firsts, but I definitely do a wide range of things um, and I see that as being diverse I see that being an entrepreneur I see that being COVID proof because you know if you're good at only one thing and then whatever the situation might be something comes along that stops you from being able to do that one thing then what do you have to fall back on I've been told, you know, what what I'm doing is a waste of time or just do this or don't do that or what happened to you doing this. Why do I have to just do one thing? I wish people would be more open-minded, but they're not. People will be people. Different people have their own different perspectives. But at the end of the day, it's your life and you have to live it the way you want to live it. If you're happy with doing something for five years and then you just don't like it anymore, so what? Then you find what you want to do after that. To me, unstable would be not knowing how to survive. That would be unstable. And that would be crippling. But changing direction, finding your path, finding what you're good at, which again does not have to just be one solid thing that's just being diverse that's being um that's being a, a multitasker um i mean there's so many positive elements of being able to do that if somebody is i, I just feel like the other perspective is so limited and not to say that, you know, somebody that's been a school teacher or whatever the career may have been for 50 plus years, not to say there's anything wrong with that. But you cannot sit there and say to somebody that has multiple career changes that they're unstable for that reason. If they know how to keep a roof over their head, pay their bills, um, have a car, um, have a stable family unit, whatever that might look like and they're happy what else should what what even concerns you about it 
And by you, I mean the person that has an issue with your style of life. It's very disheartening to see the misconception about a career change. The negative stigma about a career change. I have a friend that is a chef. Now she's planning on being a teacher. I don't have an issue with that. But some people do. So it's like even when she approached me about this shift you know she maybe she's already told somebody else and they said certain things or they kind of uh had a negative tone when they were talking to her it doesn't bother me at all like you know do what you want to do you're a, sh a chef but you're gonna teach and so what if it's not teaching culinary classes you could have multiple interests and I don't think anybody should knock you for that. As I mentioned before, I was kind of peeved because, you know, somebody had an issue with what I was, what I'm doing. But at the end of the day, it's what my life looks like right now, not theirs. And there is no correction from them that's acceptable because it's not their life. So don't let anybody, you know, discourage you about what you're, what you're going to do with your life. As people's age changes, their goals, their objectives, their interests could change, like taste buds. Taste buds don't remain the same from a newborn up until a 95 year old. It's not gonna be the same. Goals can be like that too. In fact, they should be like that. Somebody should always want to achieve more. Um, not to say that they're discontent with their current situation but if they are there's nothing wrong with wanting to attain more and achieve more keep pushing forward have some sort of motivation that drives you to constantly better yourself i think that's what it is to be better and you know I, I've, I've got one client that is entirely content with the bare basics out of life doesn't want anything fancy and it seems like he probably never has very straightforward type of guy but I have felt something is lacking or I've felt stagnant if I'm not doing something that is uh, mentally stimulating that's enhancing who I am or what I'm about um, or what topics I've I've learned about which I think also is is part of the reason I didn't want to just leap into spending a ton of money and not knowing if it was just a, a mere curiosity or if it was a lifelong career path to do anything related to medical I think as long as you have goals um, that are attainable and I say that loosely because you know it's amazing what can actually be attainable under right circumstances under motivated individuals driven and really pushing to make that goal happen um, but I think goals are extremely important and don't let anybody cast down your vision of what your goal should look like based off their views, their limited views, their negative perspective is not fair to you. You have to do what's right for you, what's right for your children if you have any children, what, what is going to make you feel fulfilled um, and not live with lifelong regret of, oh, I should have done that. You know, I wrote, I read somebody's obituary earlier today. Uh, my client's friend had passed away. And in that obituary, she really, really, really wanted to be a lawyer. And she wanted to be a, a lawyer early on in life. That's what she wanted to go to college for. But her mother, and this is what the obituary said, because I never met this woman. But her mother, it said, her mother was strong-willed and told her she needed to go into an occupation that 
most African American women in Los Angeles during the 60s were doing. Um, and, you know, again, this is during the 60s that we're talking about. Her mother um, kind of blocked her from that goal. And, you know, that was something that she was obviously passionate about. Because um, fast forward from the 60s, what, I don't know, um, 30 plus years later, when this woman was in her 50s, she now went to law school. But all the time that was gone from that dream coming to uh, fruition can't be taken, can't be given back. And worse than that is when people have their dreams crushed, their goals crushed, and they never recover from you that. know the, They wanted to do that, should have done that, never got around to doing that. Go do that. Go figure out a way to at least try to do that. Again, you know, depending on what is actually attainable, but at least put that effort in and don't let somebody bring you down. Don't let somebody stop you by their negativity, by their experiences. And that's another thing. I ask a lot of people what they like about their job or whatever it is, you know, why they're doing what they're doing. But at the end of the day, that's their experience. That's 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 them. That's not you. So just because they hated doing something or really loved doing something, that doesn't mean that. But if somebody is telling you, you know, don't do this. This is a waste of time. You know, um, don't don't go to culinary. Um, you could just you read some cookbooks. Don't don't be a teacher. Kids are difficult to deal with. Don't go into the, the medical assisting program because that's that's my personal one. It's it's a scam. Is it really a scam though? Is teaching not worth it? Yeah, kids are difficult, but you, they still need a teacher. Is medical assisting a scam? Every medical office I go to, I deal with a medical assistant that works there. So I don't think it's much of a scam. Is culinary a scam? There's a lot of famous chefs, and even if there wasn't, that's a whole lifestyle change to know how to be a culinary so artist. Don't let anybody step and squish your goals.